So a few months ago, um, there was nearly 200 countries that came to an agreement and uh, formed the Global Biodiversity Framework. And so this was at COP15, so similar to COP27, the big climate conference, we have a nature one um, that's just, just focused on, on biodiversity and nature. And so that, that happened a couple months after COP27. And one of the targets that was agreed upon there was um, that we would conserve 30% of the Earth's land and water by 2030. And so this is commonly called the 30 by 30 initiative, right? It's very, very ambitious. Um, and so currently, globally, we're at about 17% land protected, 10% marine areas. So a doubling and tripling of, of where we need to go. Um, and it's really important that we aren't just hitting these targets as a percentage goal, as an area goal. It's just put conservation efforts anywhere to hit these policy um, very ambitious initiatives, and that um, we're using science to ensure that we're directing the activities in places that need it the most. And so our team at the, at the Wilson Biodiversity Foundation in Yale, we've developed a suite of indicators that track how species habitat and protection is changing over time. Um, basically, so we can give a rating um, to any area on Earth of how important that is for biodiversity, and that can uh, is, is extremely important to, to give that then to, to governments and to um, and companies to help them guide and report on their actions. And, and again, tying this back to, to climate change here, and especially carbon, especially what Sue was just talking about, um, you know, we have COP27 goals, we have COP15 goals. They're both so important and, and ambitious, and it's really important that we can overlap those two and find areas where we can deliver co-benefits. So, with satellite imagery, we can map where the most important places are for carbon and then overlay that with the areas that are most important for biodiversity and help us achieve both of these um, extremely ambitious but important goals.